What's going on everyone, Sly here, and I have the recent honor of attending the Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail Media Tour, so a huge shout out to Square Enix for inviting me. Today I'll be presenting you a tour of one of the areas we had access to, Urko Pacha. And as you can see here, like I was starting to, you know, get ready to get set for the recording and everything. Um, I'll be switching out between HUDs and whatnot, because I just want to kind of show off the areas. And of course I'm using the arc um, mount, but starting off in the main aetherite and the perfect place to start off, the Mezcal Distillery. Um, like Tuliola, if you've seen the Tuliola vi video, um, there is a taco stand in the middle of Tuliola, but here we have the Mezcal distil Distillery that has, you know, a, a little bit of a, you know, meats and everything to go with your Mezcal. And if you didn't know, Mezcal is basically liquor that is distilled from the agave plant. And you see like a lot of similar looking agave plants, or I think they are agave plants around Urquipacha, especially around the Mezcal distillery. And here we have an alpaca just slaving to make the, the Mezcal. But yeah, of course, of course me, being the cocktail connoisseur I am and, and spirits connoisseur I am, it wouldn't be me without starting right at the Mezcal Distillery. And over in the distance, we see some other media tour goers, I believe practicing some, um, looks to be Pictomancer on some dummies. But here is the main area, eighth right area of Urquipacha and this area is called Watchin Pelo. Again, uh, you see things like cactuses or cacti, excuse me, and uh, other kind of desert going plants, agave, because again, we're in spitting distance of the Mezcal distillery. And one thing about Urquipacha I, I really like is, you know, the these, these sloping hills and just the flora and fauna here, you know, here we have a, a, a family owned ranch of alpacas and whatnot. And here, of course you can see I, I'm playing as a Viper and so I'm switching back to my HUD because I want to try my hand at this uh, fate. And really I was just, kind of getting my hands on Viper, just learning it. And Viper is, I will say it is, um, it's really fun to play. A lot of people agree that like with Viper, I don't think it's that difficult of a job to kind of get your, kind of get your head around or wrap your head around it. Um, it feels like, it feels like you're mostly doing the wrong thing. But even still, you are, it just feels so rewarding. Uh, especially, especially when you go into your burst, the, the burst is, it is so fun and so rewarding. And it's, it's AOE heavy, which I thought would be a bad thing, but it's, that's just part of the damage. It's just really good in its burst in the twin blade form. In this particular fate, we are fighting against Melodorus Megamagui. Not sure if that's the correct pronunciation, but. And again, not gonna be the most optimal play of Viper, but it was really fun. So uh, you'll definitely see uh, a lot of other content creators out there who, who probably who probably have their heads better wrapped around it. But I will say it was it was really fun, and I do actually look forward to leveling and learning Viper. Pick the Mancer, on the other hand, I, I feel is going to be a little bit more difficult to wrap my head around as opposed to to Viper.
So we'll kind of fast forward to the end of the fate. Because I was there for a while killing these things. But yay, we did it. And got an achievement. So from outside of watching Pillow, I'm um, going to head about southwest to another fate, Chabameki. And in this fate, you are taking on wandering zoos. So I'll show a little bit of this fate. And basically, you're just killing a bunch of zoos. And with this, we dust off another fate. Yeah, and here in this area, I wanted to kind of highlight the some of the mobs you'll be facing and some of the fates. I think some at some point we do see an A rank. And I think some of the media tour goers were were lucky enough to to kill the A rank as well. Here we're in an area called Ekulvo's Inn. Really, really pretty area. Back the mender. See if anything's broken. Oh, but of course. Oh, I thought I was getting ready to speak to him. This area southeast of Watching Pelo is called Chaba Yakek. As you can see, we have a um, different species of Ochu. And here we have the Panak Pelu Retreat with its own hot spring. Uh, a really good place to probably G pose and just, you know, hang out. The thing about Urkopacha I really love is just the atmosphere. Um, it kind of has a it has a, a Zim step feel to it. And here we have the uh, Rotel. And of course, alpacas. So yes, they are mobs. The alpacas are mobs. And here, um, this leads into Tuliolo, one of the main hub cities in Dawn Trail. So yeah, alpacas are mobs. You you kind of hate to hurt them, but they're they're there. Don't hurt the alpacas too much. They're cute. But this vista is so amazing in Urkopacha. Uh I've been really, really lauding the the dev team in, in Dawn Trail for for their amazing scenery. Here we're flying over Chabameki. Off to the west, watching pillow. And Sea Blue's coffee grounds. Wonder if that was a a pun on the part of the dev team. Coffee grounds. Yeah, really, really pretty spot. And one one thing I'm noticing about a lot of the areas and a lot of the people in Dawn Trail is that as opposed to past expansions, the past areas, the the people here are pretty industrious. You know, the Pelo Pelo, you know, known for, for Mezcal and they do other things like coffee too. And and I I really can't really think of 
anywhere anywhere in in the past few expansions to where you know people have been this industrious where they're they're known for like a product other than something for war or defending myself But then again, I may maybe may just be having a brain fart. I don't know. Is this a regular Mega Magui? And we have another species of cactar, the Noto cactar. Here we're in Miklu's Mate Garden. Another area. And more more alpacas, please. Don't harm the alpacas too much. I know you need to level, but you know. And this area right over here, Larn Toto, I thought was one of the the more beautiful spots here in Urkapacha. This this little lake. Such a beautiful spot. Flying off to the southwest. And of course, me checking the map just to see where I'm going, just to not highlight things. And here I'm going to go un... Well, I thought I was going to go under. And... Or you see a level 100 mob. And here we have a really auspicious gate. In an area called Warcore Lador. Lardor. Excuse me. And again, we're showing the ridge taps. Ridge trap. Another variety of uh, enemies we've already seen in other expansions. So now we now we finally go under what is called the indelible passage. And here we have an NPC member of one of the uh, Peace Tribes. Of course, welcome to Tyrol. Hashtag, welcome to Tyrol. The Hanu Hanu, the Pelo Pelo, and the Moblins were mentioned, but I don't remember what those particular Beast Tribe, that member of, or that Beast Tribe is called. Uh, if anyone in the comments knows, uh, please uh, feel free to to let me know in the comments what that beast tribe was. Over there we uh, saw a level 100 queen hawk. Hunt mark, possibly. Here we reach an area called Solace, um, which looks to be a, a type of ruins. And this, speci this specific area called the Shades of Grief. And it's always interesting to uh, kind of learn more about these areas in in the form of the sighting log, which we'll get in Dondrail. So looking forward to hearing the lore about that area and what's got that name. Here I decided to join uh, another fate. This one called So Long Suckers, where you're taking on Prowling Bloodsuckers. I'll show a little bit of this off. Again, the dev team having a really fun time naming the fates.
And of course, me finishing the fate, putting off a little more than I can chew, but still getting through it. Now, this area really piqued my interest because, as we'll see soon, um, in the distance we see a cliff with with cuts in it that look that looks like the cliff is on fire of some sort. And I'm kind of interested to learn how that happened or why it happened. And I'm willing to bet that's probably in uh, a story or a bit of lore uh, for Urkapacha that we'll learn through through you know NPC dialogue or or possibly main story. So heading southeast, reach another Aetherite hub, Warlar's Echo. And as opposed to watching Pella, this is more as a more ritualistic feel, I'd say. Whereas watching Pelo is more about the industry and, you know, the, the Pelo Pelo, you know, making stuff. Uh, this, again, is the Beast Tribe that uh, the name escapes me. And this area is called Kariorzar the Gracious. I would assume named after... Someone pretty important with, within this particular beast tribe. But from Urko Pacha in general, I kind of get this Machu Picchu kind of vibe from it. And, and, and I really love it. I'm exploring around in first person, seeing what's here. There's another media tour goer. Of course, we gotta talk to an NT NPC. Area locked up, we can't go. Or I don't talk to the NPC. I, I've got things to do, apparently. I believe this was one of the, this was the second tour video I was doing. There was supposed to be a third because there was another area uh, that we did have access to. Unfortunately, the recording was lost in the transfer uh, process when we were getting our assets. So uh, F's in the comment section for that. I'm pretty sure um, a lot of other creators will have uh, footage of that. So be sure to check out the other uh, creators who attended uh, the media tour. Shout out to them as well. And again, huge shout out Square Enix for inviting us all and, and getting us together. And that is the exit to Kazuma Uka, and that is, I believe, the other area that we were uh, allowed access to, but um, again, I don't have the footage of it. I'm sorry. So, so here we're uh, once again flying over Warlar's Echo. And this temple, or yours are the gracious. Kind of a big temple, and on top, this was really curious on top, and I, I had to kind of highlight this a bit. Uh, I was wondering why there was a, a crack with what looks to be ice, but I'm not sure it's ice on the top, and I'm not curious why that was there. So to the west of Solace, we have Sorrow.
Chihuahua. And that must be an offset of or um, a different tribe of this particular beast tribe. Because then, of course, these are our enemies. Whereas the other ones are uh, peaceful NPCs that we can talk to. Overall, in, in the distance, we have these, these fields that are barren. And that is the edge of the, the area of Urkapaja. And wondering why these fields are barren. What, what happened in this area? Uh, was there some kind of famine? Um, but meanwhile, they, they do still have crops going in this small area, but it looks uh, like they had a larger amount in, in the past time, but again, the fields are barren. So again, flying over sorrow. See a lot of scorched earth. And there we have a mob called Flint, which looks to be a grenade, a grenade type enemy. And here we reach another edge of Urkapacha, Orkor Zormor. And where that leads to, we will find out in Dondrail. I'm in a kind of an imposing gate, if you will. Here we have a Minotaur type enemy called a called a Holopin. And I, I think these were the media tour growers that were trying to take on take on the A rank. I, I was waiting to see if they were feeling froggy enough. Because I was gonna try it with them. I think I was getting ready to type with them, but I, I, I believe I changed my mind. Would have been fun to see, though. I, 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 do believe, I do believe that someone did get footage of it. So, again, feel free to check out the coverage from the other content creators who attended the media tour. So moving on, I think we have a few more areas to kind of explore. And going back to Lauren Toto, and we have a a fate with some morbles. I decided not to uh, take on this one as I was a little bit short for time. There's another A rank right there. A Netrusiho. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Then again, a really, really beautiful lake. Sort of reminds me of the the uh, pixie area that we had in Shadowbringers. The area around Lita, Lita Laron and Plot Any. And here, we arrive at one of the final areas uh, on this tour, the Shades of Grief. Uh, a lot of names associated with sadness or sorrow in this area. And uh, I'm kind of curious as to the lore of why they're associated with such sad emotions. 
But yeah, I believe this is the final stop on the tour of Urkopacha. Again, huge shout out to Square Enix for allowing me the honor of attending this this year's uh, media tour for uh, Dawn Trail. Again, really, really good looking vista. I try to get a pan view, but I'm really horrible at it. Uh, but thank you again to Square Enix. And thank you so much to the support of my community. Without them, uh, this wouldn't be possible. Again, uh, feel free to check out my other uh, content uh, in regards to the media tour. I will be putting out uh, tooltip infographics, uh, another video with a tour, uh, cocktail videos as well. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'll see you in Tarawa.